primary thing is consistency is the key you have to be disciplined you have to put on those mileages weekly mileages that you are targeting at and then strength training fueling clean eating all these are very very important if there are no focused goals like reaching a particular time or speed then um, the focus should be only on developing that aerobic engine to go and finish the complete pace I started too aggressive. Finished my first loop in Bangalore in 140 around. Mm. So also I was not having any idea of the hydration aspects. Uh, no fuel. I just relied on the water stations that are available by the event managers. Right. Mm. But I did not had any fuel intake. Not even water until the first loop is done. After first loop, I started having water. But then that triggered cramps. Eventually, I couldn't even walk after. MG Road metro station. Right. I stopped there and went back to the finish line by ambulance. I am Venki, a working professional in IT as well as an amateur masters athlete and a coach for endurance sports. You are listening to the Working Athlete podcast. Here I talk to working athletes from all walks of life and experts from various sports to provide you with inspiration training tips and lifestyle advice. If this is something that interests you, I have a small request from you. Please subscribe to the channel on YouTube, Spotify, Apple Podcasts or wherever you get your podcasts from. You can also let me know what you like and what you would like to listen to more of by commenting in the comment section on YouTube. I promise to do my best to improve with each episode and bring you the best content that helps you and me get better each day. In this episode I talk to one of my colleagues and a super fast runner Sunil Kumar Koi Sunil's active lifestyle started like most of us with a regular health checkup revealing an alarmingly high triglycerides over a decade ago He took up to running to improve his health and started running mostly on the weekends from finishing his first half marathon in 2 hours 24 minutes and from not finishing his first full marathon and ending up getting back to the start in an ambulance sunil has come a long way in the last 10 years of his running journey he is now a 1 hour 21 minute half marathoner and a 2 hours 51 minute full marathoner in this episode he shares what has helped him in his running progression and what are the mistakes new runners need to avoid he shares his training methods race pacing and nutrition strategies that worked for him it was a really insightful interaction with a humble and hard working working athlete i hope you enjoy this conversation as much as i did this episode is brought to you by the bike affair if you are in search of a one stop destination that caters to all your cycling needs our today's sponsor the bike affair is the perfect place to check out i have known the founders of the bike affair Krish and Gokul personally for nearly 15 years now. In fact, my first century ride was with Krish back in 2008. They are both exceptional human beings and entrepreneurs that believe in providing exceptional service to their customers, and it shows. With over 14 years of experience, the Bike Affair has established itself as a trusted source offering honest advice and exceptional service. They are offering a special treat for the listeners of this podcast. You can enjoy a 10% discount on your first order by using the code BIKEYWENKY on their website. So if you are in Hyderabad, visit their store in Kondapur or if you are anywhere else in India, shop online by using the link the bikeaffair.com i will leave the link in the show notes now enjoy the podcast sunil yeah. welcome to the working athlete podcast it's thank a pleasure you. having you on the show thank you sir so sunil love uh, have uh, first of all congrats on a great run at the bangalore marathon a 1 hour 21 yeah 40 41. okay 1 hour 21 41 yeah. excellent excellent amazing run congrats <laughs> thank you i i think i I have taken just about double that uh, time. <laughs> no, <laughs> but it's fine. <laughs> great to great to see that. Congrats! And what what's your PB? Uh, that is last year one. That's mm-hmm. one hour twenty one minutes twenty uh, five seconds or so. Okay, so around you, the same time. 
yeah. Uh, a few seconds uh, yeah. more than your PP. Nice, yes. nice. Okay, so now let us talk about before we get into the running thing. Yeah. I wanted to understand what was your relationship with sport growing up. Okay, so yeah, during my school days and all, like I I did not had any uh, sport activity as such in the schooling days, but uh, of course I had interest uh, for all the physical activities maybe cricket or walk or jog whatever it is but uh, was never into it uh, but uh, as i uh, grew up and joined uh, uh, the work style <laughs> that we do hmm. i uh, i started uh, initially for for the purpose of uh, maintaining my triglyceride rights mm mm-hmm. So that is where I started with. Uh, so eventually, was it a, like a medical test that showed? Uh, yes, yeah. So when was this? This was in two thousand thirteen around. Okay. Okay. So my triglycerides were uh, very overshot mm-hmm. uh, than the very much it is like five hundred plus or so. Okay. Uh, so the doctors uh, recommended that uh, you include any. uh physical activity like a walk or jog or a run something like that so that is how i started with it but uh, i was not very uh consistent or, or not very frequently was doing it mm-hmm. just as and when i get time maybe during a, a weekend or so so whenever i get interest i used to go that is how i started with it but eventually when i registered for one of the events that was happening in bangalore I got to know through my friends, uh, so for that only uh, I started doing a regular one. So that is how it started. But then uh, I didn't go pretty well. Mm. <laughs> The first half marathon was like uh, one uh, two hours twenty four minutes or so, mm. and that is where I could finish. It was a struggle. So, but uh, I challenged myself, and then. uh so that gave me the desire to improve myself right when was this uh, you know the medical test that kind of uh, yeah, served as a uh, wake up call it was in 2013 13. right that is the usual uh, employees uh, right. annual health checkup uh, uh. <laughs> so that is uh, that is the one which gave me the trigger right so and then uh, when was the uh, the first registered event as such that's in 2014 mm-hmm. uh, it's like one year apart uh, almost a year apart um yeah although i started the um physical exercise um but the main reason we became consistent is because of my lunch mates colleagues at office um, so we as well uh, we uh, those days we had a nike run plus nike plus or mm. something like that some mm. app so where uh, we used to create challenges uh, so it's like weekly challenges monthly challenges so that actually uh, gave us the motivation to go and do it uh, every day so it's not only run it's like a step count and then walks right. uh, later on uh, it became like runs mm. so that is how we started with it excellent so you you talked about your first uh, yes. half marathon yep. when was this was that That's 2014 yep. right that that was the event that yes. you registered uh, asmira tamp uh, that asmira tamp asmira tamp okay. that happens in that nice road mm-hmm. so <laughs> okay so uh, you said it was like 2 uh, uh, hours 20 24 minutes 4 minutes yes. um, and w- how Uh, how was the training towards that uh... yeah it was not a structured training at all mm. uh, so only during weekends i used to put on some mileage but rest of the days uh, uh, i weekend warrior <laughs> only weekend warrior so mm. that is how i started with it but uh, so that is how uh, uh, but the problem is uh, when i enrolled for it uh but when i participated uh, i questioned myself why did i do this mm. <laughs> so you know right like uh, yeah. the struggle towards the end uh, all so, the existential questions come yes, as we exactly. struggle <laughs> yeah but uh, 
but on the on the same year like uh, i ended up uh, participating in like two or three more events mm-hmm. um yeah but that's how it started okay okay so was it like uh, you st- uh, stuck to the half marathon for some time or did you progress to full marathon quickly no no, no. actually uh, i was very afraid to challenge myself with a full marathon mm. so i controlled myself uh, for almost like 4 years so, that's good <laughs> <laughs> so i uh, i participated in uh, some of the half marathons but i used to regularly participate in like tcs world 10k um and those kind of events like 10k's few 10k's but a few half marathons as well uh, right during those years mm-hmm. so i first attempted in 2018 or 19 i guess 18 18 yeah 18. the full marathon 18 bangalore full marathon okay what was the time there i couldn't finish <laughs> okay so the apprehension <laughs> the full marathon is a beast so the apprehension you had was yes. very valid okay so uh you couldn't finish your first uh, yeah. full marathon yes uh, before we get into the uh, full marathon let us talk a little bit about the progression Yes. in the half marathon kind of distance okay uh from 2 hour 24 minutes to uh you know whatever you are now yeah. right right so what uh, how was wh- what was the progression like uh, in terms of what changed in terms of training yes and stuff yeah so uh when i started with it as i said i was not very consistent that was one thing and then um the mileage the adequate mileage was not there mm. um and uh, so uh, i realized this um uh, from 2018 onwards mm. uh, so that is the year i wanted to uh, improve myself so uh, so what i did is i used to run like 3 or 4 days per week um but i consistently focused on putting the mileage uh so no hard workouts and all right i just uh, go ahead and do some aerobic runs uh and then uh so that is how i improved my mileage and it started working from that year onwards i used to finish the half marathons uh, comfortably uh, right so from 18 onwards um also in 2019 um i i think i did uh, around 1 hour 40 minutes half marathon okay uh, so, so that gave me the confidence to register for a full marathon okay <laughs> but as you know <laughs> <laughs> yeah finishing that <laughs> finishing that in 140 is not sufficient mm. so yeah i was not aware like i was not into any structured training uh, so i was doing on my own so right so uh till you kind of increased hmm. the mileage in 2018 what uh, you know how uh, how much progress was there uh, on the half marathon timing yeah uh, i don't remember the exact stats but hmm. uh, i can share you that uh, i think i reached uh, to sub 2 hours uh, sub by 2018 okay to the yeah. right that is good and then when you increase the mileage and uh, 3 4 uh, runs a week is what you were saying yes. right from 2018 19 yeah 18 and 19 yes. that uh, improved and Correct. came to 140 by 2019 yes is what you were saying yeah so how what was the mileage uh, kind of uh, increase okay. like yeah i used to log like uh, 50 to 70 in that range okay uh for a half marathon uh so that to only during the weekends i used to put lot of mileage saturday oh, still. sunday mm. uh the rest of the days like uh due, Short to, due to work uh, mm. uh, i used to limit it to like 5 to 10k right. at the max yeah excellent so and even uh, till now, till then there were no like 
uh workouts as such they are yeah. mostly mostly aerobic focusing on yes uh building the base as yeah. such right aerobic. i was not having any idea like mm. uh, speed workouts tempos and all that i used to just log the uh, mileage and then i used to rely on those aerobic runs right so now let us talk about your uh, full marathon yeah. right your, the first full marathon so what uh, what was the mileage and uh, you know training before that and uh, how did it unfold you you already yeah. uh, said that you could not finish but yes. how, how did that actually go yeah again the routine was similar mm. so i used to get the time only during weekends so what i did is uh, i planned my long runs uh up to 30k or so i guess um but uh i increased the mileage it is not uh like up to the mark maybe i can say uh, the peak mileage was like 80k okay so uh i was not having the idea of how i should train for a full marathon at the time since i was not associated with any running community mm. or uh, any of the coaches right. uh, that are available in bangalore i used to train on my own so i wanted to try it myself and see how it goes mm. um, so the way i started again i started too aggressive uh, i finished my first loop in bangalore uh, in 140 around mm. so also i uh, i was not having any idea of the uh hydration aspects uh no fuel i just relied on the water stations that are available um by the event makers right. mm. uh, but i did not had any uh, fuel intake not even water right so until the first loop is done mm. after first loop i started having water breaks but then that triggered cramps and all eventually uh, i couldn't even walk after mg road metro station right so i stopped there and went back to the finish line by ambulance by ambulance <laughs> <laughs> wow that is that is quite a deb- uh, debut for the full yeah. marathon right so rem- remember <laughs> <laughs> most memorable <laughs> most memorable yeah, for the long wrong right, reasons exactly. but <laughs> yeah you know, see that is the kind of golden rule right uh, yes. for whatever the distance right be it 400 meter sprint to, or 100 meter sprint to you know half marathon full marathon or 100 kilometer ultra if you start too f- fast yeah you are going to pay the price right right so that is that is the biggest takeaway yes. i guess uh, correct. for you correct uh, excellent so um from then on right what, what what was your first completed full marathon and what were the things that you did differently yes so after finishing uh, after of course finishing the event uh, uh that gave me a challenge like i wanted to come back strong and finish a uh, full marathon in bangalore itself right. uh so that desire was there that burning desire was there so i went back and uh, thought through but uh, within the same week i registered for bangalore ultra mm-hmm. that was happening in gkvk right i registered for a 50k okay <laughs> <laughs> okay you, you couldn't finish full marathon yes <laughs> in ambulance <laughs> and then signed up for ultra yes. sounds interesting so uh, because uh, i know i started very fast and uh, that was a wrong thing to do mm. uh, but then i realized it during the event only right so uh, i have set myself the pace limit uh, which uh, uh, what i wanted to try in the bangalore ultra so uh, my goal was to do 10 kilometers per hour mm. okay Six so pace. it's like 5 hours was my target right so i wanted to finish that 50k around 5 hours so that is how i planned myself and uh, i went as per the plan fortunately uh, for the same event uh, our vinod mutu vinod mutu was registered uh-huh. so i had joined jio by then and then uh, vinod mutu was there to give the company 
so we uh, he had also plans of doing 50k so we wanted to run together uh, as long as possible mm. so he gave along uh, came along with me we started running like uh, <clears throat> around uh, 30 35k we managed to do together Mm. but later on uh, i also got slowed down and he started getting cramps and all so i think he did not finish uh, and he stopped at some point mm. but then i struggled to finish but somehow i managed to finish that 50k that gave me a uh, lot of confidence of uh, doing a full marathon so i was not having any uh, goals or a particular pace in mind to finish the full marathon was the only goal so during the same time uh, uh, so did you manage to uh, uh, do in 5 hours or not or exactly 5 hours i crossed beyond 5 hours but i managed to finish finish that's yeah. the most important yeah. no ambulances are involved in <laughs> yeah my ambulances involved <laughs> <laughs> exactly yeah. so but i managed to finish uh, uh, during the same time i think uh, this uh, souls of bangalore group in hmm. uh, hsr yeah. uh, they were conducting um, uh the long runs for tata mumbai marathon uh that also i got to know through uh, our old samsung group samsung mm. runners club and uh, also vinod uh, so they gave me a suggestion of why don't you uh, join along with them uh, uh your long runs will be easier uh, they manage uh, fuel hydration and all that it will be easy for you to uh, train so just uh, curious before mm-hmm. we get into this uh, yes. souls of bangalore right mm-hmm. uh, was there because you did not uh, take care of hydration and nutrition during your first full marathon yes and the ultra was just a week after not exactly uh, a week after i think few... it was in december okay uh, this was uh, in october the uh, bangalore marathon happened oh, in so october so a couple of months so, yeah it was like a couple of months uh, but how did you uh manage did you were you fueling were you hydrating yeah. what was that so uh before doing this uh, bangalore ultra right uh, as i mentioned uh, the souls of bangalore group uh, i got to know mm. so i enrolled for tmm uh, also i joined them for all the long runs mm. whatever they have conducted like they conducted around 4 to 5 long runs before tmm so i uh, went there and attend, attended all the uh training runs uh that gave a lot of confidence like uh, as you know the hsr routes are hilly mm. and uh, also because there was a good group uh so also they managed uh, fueling stations very well mm. uh so the, i got to uh, know all this and i learned an idea yeah i learned how to fuel myself because right. of uh, souls of bangalore yeah so they used to keep their hydration points like every 4 or 5 kilometers away mm. so that became a practice and uh, i happened to learn from there uh, the same practice continued even in bangalore ultra that is amazing yeah that i wanted to get that idea yeah. okay go ahead and talk yeah so then uh tmm was the goal mm. uh i had my fellow runners uh, from ex samsung group uh, inub uh, gaurav gupta all these guys were there they also uh, came along with me uh, for all the long runs in hsr and then uh, we wanted to uh, do well at tmm yeah, of course inub and uh, gaurav were very fast runners at that time mm. uh, my goal was to just finish that's it no right. speed goals no timing goals nothing no 140 half <laughs> marathon <laughs> in between <laughs> nothing so i i got to know like how to pace myself uh, with the experience of uh, doing uh, long runs with... finish at uh, bangalore at mm. bangalore marathon and as well as 50 kilometers long run at bangalore ultra mm. and other long runs that i uh, did with uh, souls of bangalore right. so that is a i got to know the pacing strategy so uh, at tmm i uh, i wanted to stick to uh, 530 pace mm. uh, so that uh, because uh, at 6 pace uh, i struggled but still i could uh, finish the 50k with uh, 610 around 610 per kilometer pace beautiful yeah so that gave me a confidence so that is why i wanted to try 530 mm. uh, at tmm 
uh, I managed to finish uh, with 347 at the team. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. So 347 for a first full marathon. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Amazing. Yeah. Yes. Great. Great. So uh, the learnings from that were like your f- first unsuccessful versus your successful. Uh, what were the key takeaways? Yeah. The key takeaways were one is that I... i had to practice a lot that focus was not there when i attempted for the first time i was very confident of uh, finishing it because of my faster half marathons that i finished earlier right. uh that, that i was i can say i was over confident when i attempted the first uh, full marathon mm-hmm. uh but then it humbled me yeah. i realized what i did and then uh that helped me to focus on hydration fueling uh putting on the long runs uh, all those mileages nice so by this time what uh, did the mileage increase how much uh, did the mileage reach yeah it was like 80 90k i was keep on putting like 70 to 90k in that range mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. for that marathon right uh although they were slow uh, boring long runs but because of the group uh, i was able to do all that right yeah the long runs need to be slow and boring i <laughs> know is <laughs> you might right. uh, you know over extend like i often do <laughs> 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 right excellent so uh you know w- what would you consider uh, to be your ba- breakthrough year in terms of progression okay so after finishing tmm i wanted to do a strong uh, full marathon at bangalore mm. because of the previous years experience right i wanted to do a, a good uh, half marathon i wa- sorry full marathon i wanted to aim around sub 330 something right. like that uh, but then covid happened 2020 covid right. happened so yeah. the event got postponed mm. uh, but that gave me uh, it worked for me positively because uh, i got more than more time for running than the previous years right uh, so also lockdowns were there mm. and uh, because i stay far away from the city uh, it is mostly like a deserted area mm-hmm. uh, so during the covid as well uh, i used to log lot of mileage uh, unknowingly i did a lot of aerobic runs mm. uh so that actually increased my aerobic base uh i managed to do around 2000 kilometers in that year like 2020 okay <laughs> okay nice so that was the highest mileage i ever logged mm. in a particular year uh yeah in a way covid has helped me i can say uh in 2021 uh the event has happened mm-hmm. uh i think the virtual one i guess right um the, the tcs virtual happened and there was a another event by celebrate life uh bangalore half marathon or something mm-hmm. that also happened in nice road mm-hmm. so that is the year uh i went hard and raced uh 2021 i managed to do a sub 130 half marathon in that year nice so that i i myself got surprised but uh, uh i was able to do it all the base uh, uh, running has helped me help. a lot yes right. even the bangalore uh, 10k challenge i uh, managed to crack uh, sub 40 uh, in that year amazing yeah <laughs> So, so was it like the uh, pay, uh <clears throat> in terms of mileage was it still like a yeah, 70 80 or yes. did it no touch? i i did not go beyond that i used to do uh i mean the consistency was more like i used to do right. like five uh, days per week something like that mm-hmm. okay so from three four runs it became like four five, five, five runs days. so consistently yeah mm. even in 2020 2021 mm. uh i was not doing any strength training okay <laughs> so that was the uh, negative thing i can say mm. uh even though i was doing a lot of running uh 
ఐ లేటర్ రియలైజ్డ్ స్ట్రెంగ్ ట్రైనింగ్ ఈజ్ ఆల్సో వెరీ వెరీ ఇంపార్టెంట్ బికాస్ ఐ యూస్ టు లూజ్ లాట్ ఆఫ్ మైలేజ్ సారీ లాట్ ఆఫ్ మజల్స్ డ్యూ టు లాట్ ఆఫ్ మైలేజ్ ఓకే సో ఐ లాస్ట్ మై వెయిట్ అండ్ బికమ్ వెరీ లీన్ Uh, so, <laughs> how how much did you lose i think around uh, from 68 to i lost to like i uh, around 8 kg i came down to 660 yeah okay what's your weight now still 60 <laughs> <laughs> but probably uh, yeah with the uh, strength uh, better you... strength now like uh, so mm. i i don't i mean i don't uh, experience that muscle loss or something like that mm. but i whatever uh, lost weight uh is there that i am able to maintain not like mm. since we are talking about weight right when you had you know, when you got tested in 2013 and you know got started on this journey yes. what was your yes. weight at that time yeah i was almost touching 70 so since okay. then um i realized mm. not no i mean 70 68 to 60 uh, correct 60 correct yeah it's it's still 10 kg but not like you you were not like uh, 90 or 92 yeah, yeah. to which not obese or something like yeah. uh, me was so, <laughs> but yeah that's amazing yeah. so um so we, uh, now let us get back to the strength uh, training yes. aspect so what uh, uh, when did you start uh, including strength and what exactly do you do for strength and how many times a week and okay. let us talk about that yeah sure so uh, as i mentioned i got to know in 2021 strength training is also very very important right okay so uh, uh, i met one of my friend there uh, near my home only it is like a hilly area mm. it's called thurhalli forest oh okay. thurhalli yeah so many cyclists and runners they come there to right. do hilly runs we used to do uh, downhill uh, yes. cycling cycling right no, no it is not allowed <laughs> yeah. no, not in the forest region but the roads are roads still, yeah still yeah. Yeah. yeah still it is allowed uh, so i met uh, my friend suresh rathod there mm-hmm. so he came there for his long run then in uh, during the casual talk uh, he told uh, he i used to follow him on strava as well and uh, he gave me the guidance um although i was not part of his team or whatever like he gave me some free tips like you have to do uh, strength training in order to sustain uh, the whole distance for a full marathon mm. uh i i follow you on strava i i see that you are logging good mileage but if you include this strength training it will benefit you is what he told i also asked him for suggestions like can i join his group and um so at that time he said okay i'll get back to you but then uh then i started uh, doing some research on my own so on youtube i found few channels where uh, the basic uh, strength training uh, sessions were there for the runners so i used to follow them all all of them are body weight like lower body uh, little bit of upper body and core mm. so these were the uh, body weight exercises i used to follow in 2021 but then uh, at the end of that year uh, uh, suresh got back to me uh, that uh, their uh, group was starting the fresh season so i went and joined them mm-hmm. so their uh, you know pani sir is there right ah oh, pani sir pani sir yeah. so he he is the coach so he used to conduct like uh, three sessions per week online Uh, online session. strength session yes yeah. i used to follow his sessions mm. uh, so that is how i started with it when was this this is in 2022 uh, beginning beginning mm. of 2022 amazing amazing so what what are the differences you see or what are the benefits you see from strength training mm. uh, that you uh, you know you did not notice before okay one big difference that i see is uh when we finish the race uh we can finish strong mm. so that is the uh so that is how everybody wants to finish right right uh so that uh, we shouldn't curse you ourselves are, you are not de- you know feeling mm. like you're dead right. at yes. the end of it yes mm. so that is how i used to finish all my races before mm. but then when i started strength training right like i can feel that i still have the strength to uh, run for a few more kilometers even after finishing the race yeah you would have f- 
pushed to the limit during correct. the race yes but still even then, you had the yeah be, you know strength to kind of correct. continue so mm-hmm. that is the major benefit uh, that i can see uh, other things are like again uh, during the strength training we will also learn few things like the mindset uh, that we get so i know strength training is like it is tough sometimes doing those weights mm. uh, doing those reps right mm. so it it will feel tough but even then you go ahead and push so that is where you build your mental strength mm. uh, the focus so those are the additional benefits that we get amazing and also uh, they the tend to there is no like uh, studies as such but they tend to uh, help you avoid injuries also yeah of course yeah. yes due yeah. to muscle loss generally mm-hmm. these injuries will happen but once you start doing strength training uh, so it helps you to uh, retain those muscles mm-hmm. that eventually helps in uh, doing the glycogen storage or whatever right so which will help you nice so what what is your uh, full marathon pb and uh, you know how was the you know how did you get there okay my full marathon pb happened to be this year only at tmm wow hmm. it's uh, 25 nice okay so uh, as i mentioned earlier suresh uh, i had met right so hmm. uh, in uh, so i was almost Although I was training under Pani sir, uh, I was mostly associated with those closed group. Like uh, we are like four members. Mm-hmm. So when I joined a uh, pacemakers team, uh, so these guys were there. Uh, so I I knew only Suresh Rathod uh, then, mm. but then he had couple of other friends. So we used to train together. Right. Almost all the uh, sessions that Pani sir used to give, we used to train together. so that is how we got associated with each other and then from then on we continued to uh, do the same mm. so even this year's race also we four of us went there and raced together right and so you end up pacing each other and all yeah that. it yeah. really helps uh, the teamwork uh, it actually minimizes the tasks of uh, like uh, maintaining the consistent pace mm. or whatever pace strategy that we plan right so one or the other guy uh, will take the lead and pull right. the rest of the team mm-hmm. so that is how we were able to manage and uh, uh, all of us i think uh, did well uh, mm-hmm. at this year's tmm awesome awesome so, Three, 251 yeah uh, amazing amazing congrats so you, you do you think the uh, you know having a group to kind of train together and pace together uh, helped you get there or uh, is it a combination I, i guess it is a combination of the consistent mileage Correct. the strength uh, training uh, inclusion and the uh, like minded people like minded pe- group of mind- yes. like minded people yes. training together right? right amazing amazing so what is your you know pacing strategy say for a half marathon versus a full marathon and how does it differ yeah so for half marathon right generally uh, we try to uh, go hard from the beginning mm. so we know that uh, at the max it's going to be 90 minutes so we need to push for those 90 minutes try to maintain even splits like maybe if you're planning for 10k splits or 5k splits right so we try to maintain the consistent pace uh, among all these splits so this is how we plan uh, for half marathon whereas when it comes to full marathon uh, we try to conserve energy at the beginning so that uh, we have that uh, energy to push towards the end mm. So, negative split kind of thing yeah and if not even negative basic. splits are even splits mm. so okay. that is how we plan right but when you are looking to maintain uh, even pacing right when uh, on a course like uh, bangalore yeah. it's not exactly flat so Correct. how do you kind of yeah. uh, manage that so we did boston last year mm-hmm. that is also like hilly course mm. uh bangalore is also hilly course 
if we go to hyderabad that is also hilly yeah course. more flyovers yeah say. more flyovers yeah. so in such uh, courses right like rather than sticking to a particular pace mm. we uh, go by the effort right we maintain the consistent effort so if it is uphill uh, we know the pace will go down mm. but the effort will remain same that is very very important yes right? yeah but during the down ins also effort will remain same but we tend slightly to faster, faster yeah. than the uh, average pace that we target right. so this is how it will work mm. uh, during the hilly courses as well right so basically you would uh, decide on a pace and try to stick to it and then of course taking the correct uh, hills and all that into consideration yes. you will plan accordingly correct right excellent so how would uh, you know before i would like to talk about the boston as well uh, boston experience but uh, before you get there uh, what would be we talked about the pacing strategy for half marathon versus full marathon how would your fueling uh, strategy be uh, okay. you know between these two yeah for half marathon uh, generally we don't need uh, as much as we need for full marathon right mm. so because the efforts are uh, efforts are there but the endurance that you need for full marathon is little lesser here mm. uh, so uh, what we do is uh, generally it will be gels mm. or uh, uh, the hydration would be uh, fast enough or univade kind of uh, energy drinks right uh so that will remain same the f- fueling part will remain same uh, only the gels will vary mm. so in case of half marathon we'll reduce the, the number, number of gels, gels that okay. are needed mm. whereas for full marathon like it will be like in the frequency of one gel per 30 minutes or so right so for half marathon how many gels would you consider uh, we'll stick to two gels mm. uh, that is good enough for okay. uh, half marathon and for full it will be it will be like four hour. yeah four. four or five at the max okay excellent so uh, now let us let, let us talk about uh, boston hmm. so it is considered the mecca of uh, <laughs> yeah. you know running uh, well right. right so what what was the qualification time and uh, you know yeah. how, how did the experience of racing boston itself go yes so uh, i did mention about doing a strong uh, full marathon at uh, bangalore right right uh, see when we when we started uh, training under pacemakers right mm. uh, there was an uncertainty of when the event would occur so mm. they did not announce a date so uh, however it is uh, we wanted to uh, be race ready whenever they announce uh so what we did is we started logging mileage right. so every week consistently we used to log like 80 to 90 kilometers uh along with suresh and other team members mm. uh so this is how we prepared ourselves and we were uh, keep on waiting for the date to come mm. so uh in april they have announced i think uh, before april uh i think february or so they have announced the event date so april was the event date um but i was not having any aim of doing a bq mm. or uh, sub 3 hours mm. nothing like that i just wanted to run with my team mm. as much as possible right okay so only suresh was uh, having a goal of uh, doing a sub 3 and uh, he also wanted to pace me as well as much as possible so uh, before that we logged few uh, tempo runs mm-hmm. long runs tempo long runs uh, so there uh, it gave me a bit of confidence that i can also hold uh, that pace for uh, at least like 2 2 hours or so 2 hours 15 minutes or at the max 2 and a half hours i can mm-hmm. hold so that is what uh, i got to know during those uh, hard long runs right uh but towards uh, the event right uh, one other uh, team member also he was registered for uh, half he also upgraded to full marathon mm. so tilak right. so he he also joined us so that gave me more confidence like now i have not one i have two pacers 
so it made my job easier uh, because those two guys were there around me right uh, so they pulled me uh, until like 32k or so mm. after that uh, uh, i started feeling cramps uh, but still uh, tilak was with me uh, so suresh went ahead and uh, he he wanted to race hard from there mm. so he uh, went ahead but tilak uh, uh was also with me he was uh, accompanying me till vidhan soda so la- like last 3 4 kilometers were left mm. but then uh when i reached vidhan soda i recalled myself like what all i did last 3 months mm. it was very tough training like with these guys doing those right. intervals long tempos and pose mm. so for a beginner like me right like i just joined uh, their team uh, like a uh, couple of months ago uh so going to that grind right it was very tough for me so i i talked to myself okay if we don't push now these guys will make me do this again <laughs> for next <laughs> next cycle <laughs> right so let's push whatever happens we will push now only mm. so i went hard from there so last 3 uh, kilometers uh, i was at the border line like uh whether i'll be able to finish 3 hours or not mm. it was at the border line so i managed to push from there very hard uh so i reached uh, the finish line in 259 25 or something like that wow. so it was like nice. 30 30 seconds before the <laughs> amazing so, so that qualified you for boston correct so right. that uh, i did not plan but that happened because of the previous uh, uh, training that i had mm. uh Excellent. so because yeah. of these teammates only that also no, <laughs> they, 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 they help a ton right, right. yes so now you qualified for uh, right. boston with an amazing sub 3 yes but marathon but then also i did not had any plans to hmm. do boston hmm. okay uh, after doing this even that year also i think uh, towards the end of that year uh, these guys proposed so anyways uh, you also got qualified we are also planning to do boston so let's uh, do it together uh, is what they told since you have the company now it will be the best time to do otherwise uh, yeah it will be difficult later mm. is what they told so i followed them and then uh, applied for it at that time i did not had a visa as well mm. <laughs> so i had to go through that visa process and a uh, lot of uncertainties were there finally yeah. we managed to do mm. so you managed to go there yes. what was the experience of racing in boston like oh it was amazing so it is like unforgettable mm. uh, uh that to uh, we had my uh, tilak was there like who was there along with me in uh, bangalore as well mm. uh, so we wanted to race together there also uh, just like how we did in bangalore mm. uh so we uh, started off bit conservative because of the crowd that we had ahead uh, we targeted around like 255 or so mm. uh, that was our target goal uh, initially we had written ourselves like what all splits we need to do and all that did our homework mm. uh, but when we reached the first uh, target that we wanted right Uh, we were uh, already uh, short by like 1 minute or so the okay. first 10k we mm. were supposed to reach in 40 minutes 40xx right but we were a uh, little late 41 there, 41 xx mm. so there itself uh, we got to know that we are a little on slower side mm. but uh, there uh, from then on like we uh, recalculated uh, so we uh, we didn't bother uh, whether we will reach the goal or not Uh, so we went to plan b like we wanted to do a sub a sub 3 mm. so that was a plan right so from then on like the weather was uh, very uh, not good actually uh, it was raining it's cold or raining okay. cold mm. and uh, many people were like cramping and <laughs> we could see right. literally they were not able to walk as well mm. so we had those uh, heartbreak hills uh, and newton hills all mm. those so it was very tough but uh, uh we managed to finish uh, in 25746 together 
Nice. So all the uh, mats that we crossed and all the the finish line, everything matched. <laughs> so uh, all the timings were exact right. between me and Tilak. Uh, so, as if uh, one is running with both <laughs> of them. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Right. It was like that. It was right. very, uh, very good. Actually, we never imagined we could run like that. Right. But uh, it happened. Excellent, excellent. It's uh, it's really good to have someone yeah. with you like that, right? Yes. It doesn't matter where it is. Yeah. But it'll <laughs> still, uh, you know, get through all the challenges. Right. Excellent. So, what would your typical, um, you know, you talked about long tempo runs. Yes. You know, gave you confidence Correct. for going for a harder hmm. full marathon. Race. Yes. So, what would you consider your typical like uh, key workouts in a you know how how would your week or month look like typically in terms okay. of uh, different workouts and stuff yeah so generally in a week right uh, if it is a building phase um, we follow one uh, speed workout if right. it is uh, towards the uh, like we are, we if we are close to the race right mm. uh, then we uh, move to two speed workouts okay and would the speed workouts be similar or how is no it? so mm. one interval one tempo so that would okay. be uh, the pattern mm. uh, the long runs we will vary okay. so uh, generally during the build phase it will be like easy runs easy long runs mm. uh, but once we get into that uh, speed training phase right there we go and hit uh, uh, close to marathon pace uh, for certain segments okay so mm-hmm. that is how we plan our long runs so how uh, when you say build phase with one intro one speed workout mm-hmm. uh, how many weeks before the event would that be and when you say a two uh, when you move to two workout yes. two speed workouts mm-hmm. uh, when would that be Okay, so uh, whenever we take any training cycle, right, mm. we make sure we have enough time, like at least uh, 16 weeks. 20 16. to 16 weeks is what we look at mm-hmm. uh, for any marathon training. Right. But if it is a half marathon or so, we will cut it down, like maybe like 10 weeks mm. is also sufficient. So whatever time is available, we divide that into three phases. Mm-hmm. So one is build phase, and the next one is the endurance phase. The last one is the speed phase, the marathon training, or marathon speed phase. Okay. So this is how we divide. So during the build phase, we mainly focus on building that aerobic base. Mm-hmm. And uh, during the endurance pa- phase, we uh, try to hit our uh, long runs. Uh, whatever is the event that we are aiming at, base is that we will plan our uh, long runs. So that is about endurance. Mm-hmm. Uh, in the marathon uh, speed building phase right so there we uh, target uh, the long runs uh, also there will be two uh, speed intervals like one is y intervals another one is a tempo mm. and in the long run as well we hit that marathon pace or close to marathon pace uh, for certain distance mm. it, not the entire one not the not right. the full distance mm. so only towards the end of the cycle right maybe couple of weeks before we go and uh, do a full full distance uh, tempo okay a long tempo yeah otherwise it's like a half or one third of the yes, distance exactly. stuff like that. yes okay right so that's how you your correct. you know typical yeah uh, so our workouts. correct mm-hmm. our entire cycle will be like this mm-hmm. so how how would you taper how many weeks do you taper for uh, yeah. this how, how and how does it figure when it compared to the 16 or 12 week uh, period okay so uh, generally our uh, mileage is right like we do three uh, progressive weeks one down week mm. so that is how it will be right this is the pattern that we follow mm. uh, so we start from like 60k uh, in a week that is where we start we slowly move towards peak mileage uh, so in some cases we may go beyond 100 as well mm. per week right uh, then we cut down our mileage and gradually uh, come down a taper will be like uh, last two weeks or so in okay. general 
Mm. Uh, so we maintain the same intensity, but we reduce the volume. Volume mm. mileage, mileage will be little less, right. but you'll intensity will be similar. Right, right. Excellent, excellent. Oh, this is you know amazing insights uh, for all you know on various aspects of training yeah. and running. It's uh, excellent. So, what, to kind of conclude the session, what would you say are the biggest lessons? so far that you learned and that you would you know like to share with the fellow working athletes yeah for, for any beginner right like uh, the primary thing is consistency is the key mm -hmm. so you have to be disciplined you have to put on those mileages uh, the weekly mileages that you have to, you are targeting at and then uh, strength training fueling uh, uh, the clean eating all these are very very important uh, so if there are no uh, focused goals like uh, reaching a particular time or speed then um, uh, the focus should be only on uh, developing that aerobic engine to go and finish the complete race mm -hmm. so this is what i can say amazing amazing thank you uh, sunil it has been uh, excellent uh, you know chatting with you and learning a lot uh, about running and how to structure uh, the training or how it is very uh, you know insightful you have um, over a period of time over a long period of time you done one thing at a time it's not like you uh, you did not include any speed workouts and stuff yeah. like that until much later until when you have uh, years of base yes right? yeah so that is my takeaway you know <laughs> i tend to yeah i tend to overdo stuff when it comes to running i yeah. i've very methodical when it comes to cycling and stuff but when it comes to running i tend to be more enthusiastic trying new things but when the, my body and muscles are not ready and i end up you know injuring myself but yeah this is very insightful to learn anyways i i also learned from that way only <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So that, that, that's what right when you share the yeah. experience our experiences right right people yeah, and yeah, avoid exactly. those or right. learn from those. Yes. That's the whole idea of right. this podcast as well, yeah, right? Sure. So, thank you, thank you for giving me the opportunity to talk to you. It was a nice session. Thank you, and thank you for uh, taking the time. Yeah. Uh, although it is very far for you to come, <laughs> no thank you for taking the time. Thank you. That was my conversation with Sunil. I hope you enjoyed that. If you are enjoying these podcasts and are finding them useful, please consider supporting the podcast by subscribing to it on YouTube as well as on your favorite podcasting app. It really helps. Thanks again for your continuous support. See you next week with another guest.